what's up YouTube welcome to this installment of Mike's vehicle vlogs and I want to thank you yet again for joining me I uh, greatly appreciate it all the time I really do appreciate all you guys who tune in uh, all the time and, and check out all these new vlogs and, and such so I appreciate it we got another Aztec vlog here uh, right now and um, well it has to do yet again with this ear piercing screaming noise that I've had with the tech pretty much since I finished rebuilding it. Now, over the last few Aztec vlogs, I have tried to make an effort to eliminating this noise. Um, as I kind of mention it all the time in all these other, uh, you know, vlogs since then, but we do, um, we, we replaced the belt with a new belt. Uh, we replaced two of the pulleys. I was on my way to replacing the harmonic balancer, thinking maybe it was that, but even with the belt off, we were still getting this high-pitched noise. Um, and for a while, it sounded like it was coming from that side of the engine, which is why I thought maybe it had to be a belt or a pump or something like that. But with the belt off and nothing else rotating other than the harmonic balancer, uh, turns out we still have the noise. Um, uh, so I started kind of looking into things on YouTube and Google and read some stories and saw some videos about a couple of possible solutions that uh, may be contributing to this noise. But one of them, which I did try, was replacing the camshaft position sensor, um, which honestly I was going to replace it anyway. I wanted to try to slowly replace all the sensors on this car. Um, I have a feeling they're all original, so I was working up to that point, but I figured let's go ahead and replace it, and um, it didn't change it, thought maybe there was uh, maybe some mechanisms in there, but you guys, um, you know, <laughs> for, for a long time I have had this, this dreading feeling uh, in the back of my mind, kind of, kind of what the issue is actually and I don't know if I'm just kind of afraid to bring myself the terms with it um, but this is the vlog where we're gonna find out and uh, I mean in a way I'm really hoping that I find the solution or the issue I should say to, to what is making this noise but uh, I'm not very happy with what I'm gonna have to do <laughs> so I'm uh, a part of me has been thinking it's a vacuum issue, and if you have been watching the last, you know, few Aztec vlogs since it's been running, I have been replacing vacuum lines here and there. We replaced the PCV vacuum, we replaced the uh, crankcase ventilation vacuum, which is on the back side of the motor, comes up to the front and goes into the air snorkel, so replace that. Uh, I replaced the EVAP tube, um, it's actually on the same line as the PCV valve tube. But all of that line is good. Um, the PCV valve boot did have a crack in it, but, uh, you know, taped it up. Still not where the noise is coming from, though. Um, I think I have a bigger leak, and uh, my theory now is it's coming from one of two places. It's either going to be one of my plenum gaskets or it could be the throttle body gasket. I don't think it's the lower intake gaskets. I think if any th gasket is leaking around there, it's the upper intake, which, again, the plenum gaskets. Um, so if that's the case, all I would have to do is it, you know just at least take the plenum off, check the gaskets, check the plenum, and maybe look at the intake on the plenum side to see if maybe there's any cracks or anything. Um, but there's a chance that something didn't seat 100% when I was putting the plenum back on. It's really strange how it didn't act up the first time or two that we started the Aztec. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, every time it's been started since, we've had the noise. So... Um, in this video, we're going to do a test, and I know a lot of people are probably going to uh, give me crap about the test that I'm going to do, and I'm <laughs> not crazy about doing it either, but since I don't have any fancy vacuum gauges or, or stuff like that, and I honestly don't know how to do any of that stuff, I don't know how to, to tell what's supposed to do what, 
I just don't know. So I'm referring to what they call the carb cleaner test. And yes, I am nervous about the carb cleaner test because carb cleaner is very flammable. Um, but I did talk to uh, you know somebody I work with uh, at the shop who's a mechanic, and uh, he, you know, he said he's done the carb cleaner test millions of times. I personally have seen the carb cleaner test done just from uh, you know friends of mine who have worked on my cars and stuff, so I've seen it done before. It, there's always the risk of something blowing up or catching on fire, and you know I'm not crazy about that idea. Um, so I mean I don't have a fire extinguisher, I don't have anything, but I'll have a bucket of water with me if that counts. But sure enough, if the carb cleaner is sprayed into the area where the gasket is failed already or not sitting right or something, we should notice either a change in the sound or a change in how the engine runs. It's either going to bog down or could possibly speed up. I don't know. So yeah, now uh, the only thing that I'm really afraid of, I'm not doing this on the hot engine. We're going to just start it up. It hasn't ran all day, so it's cold. Um, but, you know, we'll start it up and then we'll do the test immediately. But, um, you know, got to I'm going to recheck the wires, make sure all the plugs are in, all the spark plug wires, make sure... All the wiring harnesses are, you know, the sensors are plugged in all the way because if the carb cleaner catches any arc or, or anything like that, then uh, we could have a potential potentially dangerous situation. But regardless, uh, we're going to see if we have any kind of progress with the carb cleaner test. I'm really hoping that all I'm going to have to do, and I don't want to do it, but hopefully this will be the easiest uh, thing. Um, is the plenum is the worst case scenario, Ch uh, changing or looking at those gaskets again on the plenum. And for some reason, I really don't think it's the lower intake. I, I think the noise is coming from the upper intake. The water may not be the best thing, but at least I'm taking some sort of precaution in case uh, something goes wrong. I don't have to spray much. I just gotta do it in little spurts is what I'm gonna do. So, you know, around here, 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 here. Try to get a little bit back there. But it won't be just constant spraying, you know. So it should be, we should be okay. Got the water here. And uh, I'll move the Fiesta just in case. <laughs> Wife's in the house sneezing. Every time she sneezes, it sounds like somebody's trying to kill her. Okay, carbon throttle body cleaner. Put that up there. The light should be far enough away. I don't think. You know, we're just gonna be a little bit here, here. Should be fine. And of course, we got the gas leak underneath the car. Oh man, nervous. So nervous about all this. Like I said, it's cold. It hasn't ran at all until now. It's actually. Oh, I hate that compressor. I'll wait for that to go off. It'll probably be a minute. <sighs> I'm gonna have to find the fuse for that. And unplug it. It's no good right now anyway. It's not even hooked up. The uh, rear air suspension probably doesn't even work uh, the shocks are probably old and leaky and I want to convert it over to just the standard non air rod shocks okay here we go Changed a little bit from this angle right here. I bet it's a plenum gas here. Maybe that's it. Is 
Look, it's going away. It's getting quiet. So it's coming from up here. It's definitely not as loud as it was. Unless it's in the back. Yeah, look, I think I found it. So it's coming from, it's definitely coming from the plenum gaskets. It's not even as loud as it was. Oh. Yeah, I think I found it. See, that's kind of what got me to thinking that it's a vacuum too, because the last video that I did, the uh, when, when you open the throttle, see how it stops? There's less vacuum. Yeah, it's, it's even quieter. It's not even as loud as it was. That gives me an idea of what is going to have to be redone. <sighs> yeah, so it's coming from, uh, it's definitely coming from around that area there. Okay, so I ended the vlog yesterday. Um, you know, I filmed an ending. <laughs> Um, because I wasn't really going to do anything about this, but, um, I've decided, uh, since I have nothing else to do this evening, I'm going to go ahead and just take the plenum, uh, off. And I, it's driving me crazy knowing now that, you know, we're close to finding the issue, whatever it may be. Um, but I'm going out there now, and we're going to undo the plenum off of the intake, and I want to see if I can find out what exactly happened. Now... I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to take the entire throttle assembly or stuff off. I'm going to try and leave that all on. So let's get outside and I'm going to show you guys just briefly what I am going to do to get the plenum off. So I think all I'm really going to have to do is uh, I'm going to completely remove this map sensor. It's technically already off, but I just have to unplug it pop the little hose off the back and then pull it off it's attached to this so you know we just pop that off um, I am probably going to have to undo these wiring harness again uh, maybe not um, because I mean all I really plan on doing is if I I'll take this wire loom off in this of course but I'm just gonna take the bolts off of the plenum here, uh, these two back here, and uh, where else? Take this hose off back here, this vacuum line. I think that was it. But just kind of pick it up and move it up this way. Just pick it up enough, pull the gaskets off, maybe find something around the car I can kind of place under there and prop it up. But I don't think I'm going to have to really take all this stuff off this time. Um, and I know I was talking about replacing the gas line too. The gas line, well, I mean I'm not doing that tonight obviously. But yeah, there's no way to get to the gas line. So it'll have to come off again, but whatever. Um, but I am really anxious now to just see what happened um, to these, well, at least this area under here. Um, so I'm not really going to film this process, but let me get to it and I'll show you guys what I, what I find. Well, guys, it, I've been out here for probably, you know, 20 minutes to a half hour and I started, started taking the plenum off and you know what? 
I didn't. Um, I was in the process of removing all of these bolts back here. I took the hose off, undid the wiring harness, took all the bolts off the back. I must note that on this particular car, on this particular engine setup, that alternator bracket right there, um, I had to redo or take that entire thing off because one of the actual plenum bolts is on that stud. But the good thing is you don't have to remove the alternator. I just backed the bolt right here, just backed it out. And once you loosen this, it, the little bracket just pops right off. But yeah, so I got, I started dismantling the entire backside and I got to the front and I started to undo these three bolts here. And before I even tell you guys what the issue possibly has been this entire time, I'm just going to tell you guys, always double check your work. And if you double check it like I did, triple check it. <laughs> Quadruple check it. Check it as many times as you possibly can. Um, because I think what the issue turned out to be is this bolt here, this bolt here, and this bolt right here did not seem to be tightened down enough. Really? And uh, I honestly don't know how I missed that. I went to undo this one and it was so loose I thought I had the wrong size socket. Uh, but then I looked again and then I took my fingers and I was literally just twisting it out. So the screws were in but for some reason they were not tight enough. All three of them. And I just, I cannot believe that I had made that mistake. So, let this be a lesson if, uh, if anybody is working on these. I'm hoping that's the case. Um, but all the screws, you know, they threaded in just fine. Uh, the back side, again, felt like everything threaded in fine, so nothing was out of alignment or adjustment or anything. Um, but yeah, eeny, meeny, and miny. <laughs> we're all uh, loose so I feel really dumb but lesson learned let me go get the key and let's start it up and see if we have an obnoxious scream if we still have a scream after that then I'll just have to go forth with taking it off um, but oh another minor thing that I noticed since I took the power steering pump off and I don't know if you can really see it but yeah, my one power steering line is kind of right up on the belt again. I tried getting down there and pushing it back enough, but I don't know. Then again, when I put the belt on, the one pulley, it's not 100% aligned. So maybe once it starts moving, it'll move it away just a little bit, but we'll see what happens. I really do feel like a big idiot because I went over and over and over and I have no idea how I would have missed that. So, let's, let's see what it does. Fingers crossed, this better be it. It's freezing too, so hopefully this battery's still, uh-oh. Oh, unless I messed up my connection. I might have messed up my connection. I was over here messing with this and it might actually be my it might actually be my battery being weak. Might have to jump it for the first time in a while. Oh. Just come back. She trying. Well, I guess I'll have to jump it. I might have a flat spot on my uh, starter or something. Did you hear that? Okay. We all know this little procedure well. That's better. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my god!
No way. Ooh. <laughs> Don't do that. You gotta be kidding me. I can't believe that was it the entire time. And listen, it sounds good. It's not even shaking as much now. Well, it's still showing up as a misfire, but... Oh man, I cannot believe that. That's incredible. Well, I really shouldn't be leaving it on. I'm just so happy now. I can't, you guys have no idea how, first of all, how relieved I am, but second of all, how dumb I feel at the same time. Three little tiny bolts, which were snug, but not snug enough. So there you have it. Like I said, continuously double check your work. <laughs> oh man. All right, so uh, I have nothing further to say about this situation. <laughs> so I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, the only other things that I want to mention before, uh, you know, I leave you guys this evening, um, in January, I got a couple of, uh, you know, interesting vlogs coming up in regards to both of the cars that, you know, we drive daily. Um, the, uh, Fiesta is coming up on its two year anniversary since we bought it. So I have a two year, uh, update about the vehicle and how well it's been performing and whatnot. Uh, I'm also going to do a six month uh, update on the Fusion since I it would be about six months uh, in January since I bought that vehicle uh, so look forward to those uh, in January and uh, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight the very first uh, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight episode uh, for year number eight I can't believe I Mike's Vehicle Spotlight has been going on it's going on its eighth year that's amazing um, but it's all new. Uh, if you guys missed the other vlog, there's a vlog entitled uh, something like "What What is What is the Future of MVS" or something like that. It's it's vlog 184. Um, but anyway, check it out. Uh, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight is gonna be all new, uh, completely different format. I'm excited to air it. Uh, the very first Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for year number eight will be airing on YouTube, January 8th of 2019. So January 8th will be the first. Yeah, uh, Mike's Vehicle Spotlight episode, and I am in the process of getting more Mike's Vehicle Spotlight features done. Right now, there are a total of two, so I'm working on getting the other ones done. But with the holidays and tech and all that stuff, um, you know, just haven't really, really gotten around to it. So that's it. Uh, other than that, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com/store/slash/Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all your MBS and vlog merchandise. You can also check out some of that merchandise down below this video. Scroll back and forth and we'll show you a few things here and there that are featured on the Teespring store of mine. And I'm very happy that the uh, Aztec is no longer an annoying screeching sound. Uh, so I'm going to order a Domino's pizza. We just got a Domino's nearby and I'm very happy. I love Domino's. So I'm going to order a pizza to celebrate. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.